Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about the top things that I could not live without when I did seasonal work. If you have not watched my videos before, I did seasonal work in Yellowstone National Park in 2015. It is now 2018. I am not doing seasonal work anymore, but I have started making these videos because when I started to work elsewhere, like when I went off to Yellowstone, I had no dang clue what I was getting myself into. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I have my list of things broken down into three different categories. The first is outdoorsy things. The second is clothes. And the third is miscellaneous things. So to begin my outdoorsy list, I really feel as if I could not have done a lot of things I did without a camelback because you've got water feeding to your mouth through a tube and it's really great to stay hydrated when you're hiking. And that also goes along with bringing a water bottle. You could maybe not bring a camelback and have like a Nalgene, if you don't know what that is, put a picture over here. But I actually used two Nalgenes for the beginning of like my Yellowstone experience for hiking. And finally I was like, I'm sick and tired of reaching into my book bag every time I'm thirsty. And I picked up a camelback. Bear spray is another thing that's really great to have because I don't recommend hiking anywhere in like the greater Yellowstone area. like. Tetons, Yellowstone National Park, National Forest in general up here in this like western northern area without bear spray because there are bears and you can buy it at a gift shop, you can buy it at Walmart, you can buy it basically anywhere because everyone needs bear spray if they don't have it. So get it. Another thing is a book bag because you're going to need somewhere to store your bear spray and your water bottles and all the other things I'm about to list. So a backpack is a great thing to have. I used a North Face book bag that I used in like all of middle school and high school and I just brought it with me. It's still kicking to this day. Another thing that I have marked as essential for Yellowstone or seasonal work or anything like that where you might go out and hike is a headlamp or a flashlight. I started my venture there with a flashlight and that was not enough. Like I could not see what I was doing ever. So headlamp it was. Continuing with this outdoors theme is shoes you can hike in. Um, I can't imagine doing a lot of the stuff I did in hiking boots and tennis shoes. So hiking boots are awesome. Um, like I said, I worked in Yellowstone in Bozeman, Montana at a thrift shop called Saks. I found North Face hiking boots for $4.50 that had never been worn. So you can find some good hiking boots if you just look at like thrift stores, consignment shops, things of that sort. And to add on to the bit of outdoor section, just stuff you think you're going to use. Like if you want to bring a tent, if you want to bring a sleeping bag, if you want to do anything like that, realistically, if you're driving up there, you're going to have room for that stuff. If you're not, you probably are not going to have room for that stuff. And I think if I'm not wrong, you can rent equipment at most of like when I worked for Zantero, we could like rent equipment, I think for like a small nominal fee and take it out hiking with us. But I, I brought like a tent and things like that because I had a car. On to the second category of this video is clothing. This might seem pretty like dumb, but to me it was very important that I had these things. So I'm gonna mention them. My number one thing on my clothing list was a black long sleeves top. Now the uniforms at Yellowstone for Zantera are black shirts. Like I had a button down short sleeve shirt and I literally would freeze my butt off always until finally I figured out that I had a black cardigan that I could like button and tuck into my pants and wear underneath my shirt so I could have long sleeves so I didn't freeze because I couldn't wear a jacket at work and I was cold all the time. So a long sleeve shirt that is like the same color as your uniform top is like a good thing to have. Another thing is a water resistant jacket. I had like this like thick winter coat that was water resistant and I would wear that to and from work all the time because it would rain in the mornings or at night and you have to walk from the dorms to work and like I never liked getting to work looking like a hot mess. Not that I didn't look like a hot mess but like a soaking wet hot mess. Having comfortable shoes for work was also really important to me. Um, all of the like women's slip resistant shoes I tried on were super uncomfortable and like super narrow on my feet. So I ended up going with a men's um, slip resistant shoe. I think I bought it at Walmart for like 30 bucks. The most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. I looked like a troll because my feet looked ginormous, but I did not care. Continuing on the for work thing as a belt. Um, I know with when I work seasonal work for Zantera, they provided like the clothes that I wore, like my khakis and my shirt. And I am very petite, or I was very petite. I'm not nearly as petite now, but like I wore like a double zero in pants when I worked there and it was really difficult for them to like take in my pants or like have them to where they fit me perfectly in the waist. So without a belt, I would have been sagging lots. I only have two more things on like my clothing list and they're kind of things that 
I mean, you would probably bring it anyways, but I'm gonna mention them regardless. A cheap pair of sunglasses. When I went, I brought my Ray-Bans, biggest regret of my life. I dropped them off mountains. I dropped them in gravel. I dropped them all the time and they got destroyed while I was there. So cheap sunglasses are the way to go. And the lastly on the clothes list are clothes you can layer. Clothes you can layer because Sometimes it's cold in the morning, hot in the afternoon, yada, 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 wear flannel over your tank, tie it on you, wear a beanie, things you can take off and layerable clothes will save your life. So the last section of this video is consistent of miscellaneous items that I feel like I could not have lived without. Number one thing on this list is a journal because literally when I got to Yellowstone, I did not know anybody. I met people really quickly, but like they weren't my friends necessarily. They were like just people I was hanging out with and we didn't really know a whole lot about each other. But without my journal, like I think I journaled every single day while I was there. I ended up throwing it away because I like wrote some things that like I didn't want like my mom to find or anybody like that. But the journal saved my life, like not saved my life, um, but it really did like provide solace when I had no one to talk to about like things that I didn't want to talk to other people about. And luckily while I was there, no one found it. And the next ones are if you are like a girl, not a girl, but kind of, if you have long hair, basically, make sure you bring extra hair twisties because they're expensive as crap in the general store and no one wants to pay $6 for like a rack of hair twisties. The second thing is leave-in conditioner. If you're going to a dry climate, which I did not understand, I went from somewhere that it was like super humid all the time down in Georgia up to like the Montana, Wyoming, Idaho area and my hair was falling off because it was dry, I have curly hair and it just, it got real bad. Extra tubes of chapstick also fall in this category because chapstick is also very expensive in the general store. And just bring like two tubes, put one in your book bag, put one in your pocket and take it to work with you and just like pray you don't lose them so you don't have to buy it again. <laughs> so to finish out this video, a pillow slash sheets and a comforter were things that like I definitely could not have lived without, um, which I don't know if you guys know this, but if you are working for Zantera, they don't provide you with like sheets or a comforter or anything like that. Like you bring them all. And I know if you're traveling across the country or like, you know, putting your whole life in a suitcase and taking it with you can be a very difficult thing to bring. So what I recommend doing is like, I went to Target and I bought the absolute cheapest comforter I could find. And I put it in a like vacuum seal bag and I vacuumed it out. And so it could fit in my car, but this can also work for your suitcase. So like if you want to bring like a pillow you love from home or something like that and like, you know, sheets and a comforter, vacuum pack them and put them in your suitcase. I would also recommend like being okay with leaving them behind. That way, if you accumulate more things while you're there, you don't have to like make room for your comforter. So that is it for my things I recommend bringing with you for seasonal work. I know it's kind of a mundane list. But honestly, some of these things I feel like I maybe would not have thought about, especially because when you're trying to pack up your entire life for four and a half months or longer, it gets difficult to remember everything you need. If you guys want like a hard copy of the list, I'll put it in the description box below. That way, if you want to like, I don't know, print it out or like check it off or something like that, copy it to the notes in your phone, anything like that, then you will be able to have it ready and available. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If y'all have any more, you know, questions about things you should bring, things you should pack, working seasonal work in general, my expertise are in the Yellowstone National Park. But, you know, if you want to know just about working for Zantera or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. If you guys would like to, my Instagram name is at casuallycarolyn. Y'all can follow me there. Um, other than that, just make sure you thumbs up this video if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Someone's calling me.